Hey guys, Alex the Car Guy here and welcome to another part review. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the hydraulic clutch system in the Dodge Air 34 and these are all aftermarket parts for it. So first I'm gonna explain how the system works then we'll focus on each individual part. The first thing you have is the master cylinder. So this part on the very top has the reservoir where this is where you put uh, the fluid on there. The fluid travels this way and fills the master reservoir. This side is the receiving end where the pedal goes. This is the clutch pedal. So every time you press the clutch pedal, you're actuating this cylinder. When you actuate the cylinder, you're pressing down on this plunger and that displaces the fluid that's in here. This line in the factory configuration, the line will be plastic, is connected here. And it travels from the master cylinder to the slave cylinder. It would be accepted here. The slave cylinder functions very similarly. The fluid fills this piston up and when you press on the pedal you are displacing fluid this way through the line and into the slave cylinder which causes then this section of the slave, slave cylinder to come out and when it comes out is when it pushes this right here like so. So every time it's pushing you are disengaging your clutch. That is how the system in a nutshell very simply works. It's a simple hydraulic system. Now let's focus on each individual part. Okay, the first part that we're gonna look at is the master cylinder. This part uh, was purchased from DCR. They call it the upgraded master cylinder. They don't really go into what details are upgraded besides saying that this is a heavy duty part, but uh, this is uh, pretty much I mean, all made in the US. This is fairly good uh, construction. This is not something you get from like rock hard or anything like that, like a cheap knockoff. This is a very nice uh, quality part. It does not come with the reservoir. You can buy that separately. And the other thing to note about it too is that it comes with all the required hardware for you to install it. If you were to try to buy the master cylinder, the original oil master cylinder for the Dodge 34, they're going to try to sell it to you as a kit that comes with the reservoir and it comes with the plastic line here. So you're going to be paying a lot more money if this is all you need. So I recommend you go with the DCR part, not only because of the value that you don't have to pay for the extra parts, but also because if this is indeed modified in any kind of way in terms of being heavy duty, then you're going to have a better lasting uh, cylinder. The next part that we're going to talk about is this line right here. This is the line that is going to connect the master cylinder to the slave cylinder. The right angle end is going to go into the master cylinder like so. And then this end is going to go into the slave cylinder like so. This part also comes with the required hardware for you to install it in case you don't have the, um, the previous hardware that came with your brand new cylinder. The original line that comes from the factory is plastic and plastic as you know has a tendency to expand uh, when it's really hot so you may get a pedal that doesn't really feel solid you might not get full disengagement because you're losing some of the pressure uh, in the stock line because it's expanding so this is kind of like your brakes just like you put braided lines in your brake lines this is a braided line for your clutch line and one of the cool things about it is that yes, you can go and purchase all the individual parts and components yourself and find part numbers online, but why go through all of that when you can just buy this kit from DCR? It's already fully built. It has this really nice black finish. And this is my favorite part. The braiding line is covered in black. It's a black plus protective covering. And the reason why that is important is because braided lines are abrasive because they are exposed steel as they are riding in your car and they are moving, they are rubbing. And whatever you're going to rub it against will have potentially damage. If you're looking at wires behind it, you could have shorts, uh, electrical failures in your car. If it's just rubbing against the body, it's going to wear your paint. If it's rubbing against uh, maybe another fluid line, it's going to cut into the fluid line. So. I think if you're going to go to a braided line, go for a, something like this that is covered in black protective uh, covering. Okay, now we're going to talk about the slave cylinder. The slave cylinder, it is also made in the US. It is uh, of high quality from what I can tell. And what's also interesting is that uh, this slave cylinder matches uh, the original slave cylinder in terms of it looks like it came literally from the same factory. So th it, this is pretty much 
uh, both this and the master cylinder seem to be about oil quality. Now, this, uh, DCR calls this um, the modified or upgraded slip cylinder because they describe a change in the spring internally. There are some SRTs that you will have some rattle, particularly when you go to the uh, aftermarket clutch. And the rattle is believed to happen not only from the clutch, but from the clutch fork doing this, because there may not be enough pressure of this pushing the, against the fork to keep it solid. DCR um, has upgraded something in here, they call it a spring, to prevent that. What I think, I, I played with this and my original cylinder that came out of the car, my used cylinder, and I pressed on it, and the spring pressure felt about the same. However, this stuck out longer. So I think the spring rate internally is the same, but maybe this is a longer spring, and that is what keeps the, um, the the rattling from happening. But either way, I think this is the way to go. Uh, this is also, again, DCR seems to have very good prices. You can buy this from them. I'll put a link on the website. And I like the branding. I, I just, I, I love branding, especially when you have something like a cool logo. Yeah, sure, you know, DCR didn't actually make this cylinder, but they took the cylinder to the next level. So now they have a really cool label on there. So it's gonna look neat when you install it in your car. Okay, now that we saw each component individually, let's talk about why you will need to replace them. There's gonna be two reasons. Number one will be failure. Number two will be you wanna upgrade that component. And one interesting thing to point out is that the factory manual, the Dodge manual for this car says that if you have to replace the slave cylinder, you are able to do that and not have to touch the rest of it. But the manual says that if you have to replace the master cylinder, they recommend you swap out or replace the entire system. Now, on based on my experience of working with cars, what I have seen if is that if you replace something like just this side, and this is um, filled with all fluid, you're gonna be filling this brand new part with all fluid, and that fluid is gonna be dirty and old and potentially will cause premature failure of this component. So if you are willing to take on the task and uh, are able to afford buying this whole thing, if one of these components fails, change over everything because this is all one uh, closed loop system where all the fluid is shared among the parts. And that, you, that way you only have to do this job once. Now the other thing I wanna point out too is that this is available from DCR as a complete kit or you can buy just the section or just the part that you're interested on. So you could buy this uh, or you could buy this separately. Uh, if you uh, wanna buy it, I have the links on the description below. Now I'm gonna go on to the installation. First, I gotta remove the old slave cylinder. Here's a close up of how it releases. The white tab must be carefully lifted, then the slave can be rotated and simply pulls straight out. Notice I have removed the battery and battery tray. This gives me clear access to the clutch line. The line runs from the slave cylinder up this direction, underneath the transmission mount, and then to the master cylinder, which is connected to the fluid reservoir. The clutch line is held in place by this metal strap. Removing the 13mm bolt frees up the line. With the bolt removed, I can proceed to separate the line. There are two ways of doing this. One is using the factory method of releasing the top line from the bottom using this white insert. Let's see how this works. This is how the line is hooked up. Notice the white insert. The idea is that by carefully pushing down nice and even, it will eventually release the line. Let's look inside of here. There are small tabs inside the connector and the white insert just pushes them out of the way as it slides underneath them, which unlocks the line. The service manual calls out for a special tool to do this. Here's my special tool, 11 16 wrench. I place the wrench here and I press down. 11 16 seems like the perfect size to press the insert down nice and even. Using the special tool all the, or the wrench method also reduces the chances of breaking the edges on the insert, which is important if trying to maintain the ability of the line to disconnect in the future. The second way of separating this is just to physically cut the actual line. Since I won't be reusing any part of my old setup, 
I am just gonna cut the line right here and split it in two. Let's cut this thing. First I place a container and a rag in case any fluid spills out. This cutter should do the trick, after all this thing is just plastic. Alright, come on, here we go, come on you little jerk. Alright, that was easy. Let's put this out of the way. And now I'm gonna cap the line just in case there are any more fluid in there. I don't want it spilling all over the place. The clutch fluid reservoir is next. A 10 millimeter nut holds it in place. I'm just gonna set this right over here after it comes off. There we go. Ah, there's the price. The clutch master cylinder can now be seen, it's all the way back there. It is held in place by two nuts that are removed from the inside of the car. The two 13mm nuts that must be removed are clearly visible from underneath the driver's side, right above the pedals. With the nuts removed, the master cylinder is almost free. To fully remove it, I cut the lower plastic line that used to go to the slave cylinder. It's a tight fit. But now the master can very carefully wiggle out. There we go. Here's what the line looks like after pulling all of it out. You can see the routing of it. This end went to the master cylinder, then travels down here, comes back up over the transmission, and ends in the slave cylinder. So the easiest way to remove it after cutting both ends is from underneath the car. I pull this end straight down so it comes out first, then the whole line can slide right out. Getting the new master cylinder back in can be quite challenging, however with some patience it is just a matter of wiggling it until eventually it pops into place. Here's the new reservoir, it's already filled with fluid and free of air just like the rest of the components. The new line goes underneath the battery tray, following the original location of the old line. Right now it's going up so I can attach the slave cylinder. Watch the video on how I bleed the air out of the system, I placed a link in the description below. The slave cylinder attached very easily. First I pulled the temporary cap off the line and careful not to lose too much fluid, I quickly inserted the line into the slave. Then while holding the line down, I carefully inserted the included roll pin using a small hammer. This locks the line in place. Finally a cutter pin It is also installed here to secure the roll pin. Going back to the bottom of the car, the slave is installed by inserting it into location and turning until it locks in place. The last step is to bolt down the reservoir using a 10mm socket, then bleed any remaining air out of the system and readjusting the clutch pedal rod. Check out my video on how I adjust the clutch pedal rod, I placed a link on the description below. I got more SRT4 videos coming up guys, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, thanks for watching.